Welcome back to SCV Today. I want to bring in Bernadette Boykin. She is with Boylan, excuse Boylan. me. She is with, uh, <laughs> sorry, she is with, uh, I'm older and I'm just, it's a Monday morning. It's bad. <laughs> Things are bad. I saw a bear. It's just scary. It's still, <laughs> still in my mind, I guess. Uh, Bernadette Boylan. Yes. With Children's Bureau. Right. We were just talking during the break about the need for foster parents in Santa Clarita. And again, we kind of talk about this a lot. We talk about Awesome Town. We won't, don't think about the need being here in Santa Clarita because there's so many families and everything's already normal, right? But there is a need there. And talk a little bit about what that need is. There's a huge need. Um, we get calls every day from the Department of Children and Family Services asking us for families, for children. We're talking newborns all the way up to teenagers, to sibling sets that, and we can't, we can't accommodate them. Mm. So we have children that are wake, um, basically waiting at the command center, uh, the welcome center at DCFS, uh, waiting for a family. Wow. And that's astonishing because we live, yes, in awesome town um, and we have so many people who live here, and I imagine that there are families who aren't even aware that there's a need, um, and there is. I just did an information meeting last Saturday at the Valencia Mall, and um, I was there to recruit families to say, hey, can you do this? I didn't have one person show up. Hmm. That happens once in a while. Um, I usually at least have two, three, four families show up that are interested, but last Saturday I had nobody. Wow. Very disappointing because I don't know if people are on vacation, I, I had to give it its summertime, but um, that's what we're confronted with. And mm -hmm. um, I have children that are sitting and waiting. And what, what does it take to become a foster family? Because I've heard there's so many rules and regulations. It's so hard to become a foster parent from what I understand. So can you tell us a little bit about that whole process? It isn't as hard as people think. There are a lot of misnomers out there. Oh, you know, I can't do it because I'm single. Oh, um, I can't do it because I'm too old. There, there isn't. Children's Bureau wants all kinds of families because families all look different. So it really is a matter of just having the ability, the willingness and resources to be able to do it. We have a model of practice that we teach our families and that is built on, um, can you do five things? Can you protect and nurture children? Can you meet their developmental needs and address any delays that they may have? Um, are you willing to support their relationship with their birth families, whether that's mom, dad, grandma, aunts, uncles? Um, and are you willing to connect them to relationships that are intended to last a lifetime? And can you do all of that as a member of our professional team? That includes working with the social workers, supervisors like myself, uh, the county social workers. That's really all it takes. Now, is it for everybody? No. Um, but if you ask yourself those questions and you're willing to be able to do those things, then it's a matter of filling out an application and starting from there. Can you, can you tell me what the joys of being a foster parent are? I mean, I, I have to assume that being able to, to see a child be able to grow. I mean, obviously, that was the joy that I had with, with my son was to be able to see him grow. Mm -hmm. What are some of the joys that if you don't know about being a foster parent, that being a foster parent can provide? Well, for those of us that are already parents like myself and as you guys are, to, let me start there. If you're already a parent, that question is already answered. There's, there's nothing like being a parent. Just knowing that um, if, if you have a baby and, and giving that baby the love and the consistency and know that they're responding to you with smiles and hugs. School age children, knowing that a child that didn't even know how to read, that you actually are able to send them to school on a regular basis, have them come home, sit down and read a book with them and know that they're learning. The older kids, the kids that are in high school, um, like Derek was on earlier and saying, unfortunately, he went down a path that, that wasn't so positive. Knowing that you're helping that child maybe stay on a positive path and think about going to college. It's no different than having raising your own children for those people who have never parented, and we do get a lot of couples coming to us because they were dealing with infertility issues and weren't able to create a family of their own. It's just giving that child a chance to know what stability, consistency, and love 
is mm -hmm. and in not being in an abusive or neglectful situation. And these can be, be short-term or long-term situations, correct? Yes, we have kids sometimes that, that are placed with families, maybe only stay a week because a relative has been checked out and assessed and the child is able to go live with their aunt or their uncle. Um, or we have kids that are with us for three, four years. And the goal is always for children to return to their birth family, but if they're not able to, then we hopefully can offer them permanency through adoption because right. we are an adoption agency yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, yeah, for me, if I and, the, and this is one reason, because I've always said I would like to do this, but I get attached. And if I have a child mm -hmm. for a year, I'm going to fight like heck to make that my child because I'm like, if that family hasn't proven after a year they're well enough, baby's mine, child's mm -hmm. mine. So, mm -hmm. but that, that's nice to know that there's an option there to, to, to make that all work. Right, and that's not a foreign thing to hear because we're human beings. Who, right. who isn't gonna open their family up to a child mm -hmm. and not right. want to keep them? Right. But the, the goal is, and that's why Children's Bureau supports our families to the point we're available 24 seven, where it's not a nine to five job to be a parent. We are on call 24 seven. Something happens, call us. Um, but we're there to support our families and Wonderful. make sure that they, they are following the plan and that is a child should be reunited with their family. If somebody wants um, to contact you, they contact you how? Well, go on our website. We have a great website. It's www.org, allforkids.org, actually. Sorry, www.allforkids.org. That's the Perfect. number four, not, not spelled out. And if you're kind of wondering, uh, Children's Bureau, I haven't heard of it before. Well, then your head's been in the sand. This has been an, an organization that's been around for 110 years. Must be a good one. 1904. Must be a good organization. And it's still around. So it is not a fly-by-night or anything like that. No. This is a great there organization. Children's Bureau, you can reach them here locally as well. Yes. Bernadette Boylan, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. It's thank you so much for being you guys. here. Great need, and, and, and I hope that some of you out there might be able to expand your families to include some of these children that definitely need you. When we come back, Valente Montez. This is a young man who is making a name for himself. Maybe that's the goal, that's the theme of the day. Huh? It is. Huh? Young children and, and young guys who are doing something really positive for themselves. This is a great story. Stay tuned.